When viewing this model from a top plan view, you should notice that the slab by the left entrance sticks out further than the building. To fix this, in the navigation palette, change the Layer Options drop down menu to Show, Snap, Modify Others. Then, double click the edge of the floor object that appears to the left of the porch roof. Select Reshape Tool from the Basic Tool Palette and make sure the first mode is enabled in the toolbar. Now, click this vertex point and move it to this point, which is the topmost point of the porch roof. Click to set this point. Now, onto the concrete pads. In addition to creating the slabs for the interior of the building, you also need to take care of the concrete pads on the outside of the building. There should be one here toward the top of the drawing area. Concrete steps on the left by this entrance and another set of concrete steps by this porch entrance. We'll begin with the first entrance area. First, in the navigation palette, set all design layers to invisible except floor 1, slab 1, and scan 1. Also, set floor 1 as the active design layer in the navigation palette and choose Show Snap Others from the Layer Options menu. Additionally, make sure there are no objects selected and change the fill color in the attributes palette to a shade of gray. It's okay if it's the same shade of gray you used for the roofs. Make sure you increase the opacity in the attributes palette back to 100% as well. When there are no objects selected, the settings shown in the attributes palette are the default settings for any new objects to be drawn. Now, select the wall tool from the building shell tool sets palette and enable the first mode, left control mode. Click wall preferences in the toolbar. When the Wall Preferences dialog opens, select Generic Dash Exterior Bearing 6 inches from the Wall Style drop down menu. Select the two existing components below and delete them. Then click the New button and name the new component Wood. Set the Thickness field to 4 inches. Also choose Wall Component struct from the Classes drop-down menu. Then click OK to return to the Wall Preferences dialog box. In the top right corner, click the Save Wall Preferences as Wall Style button and name this new wall style Exterior-Wood Frame-Window. Click OK twice to return to the drawing area. Now that your new wall style is created, click at the bottom point where the slab and the wall meet. Move your cursor upward and follow the edge of the slab. You should see the cursor cue parallel appear as you move along the edge of the floor object. Once you reach the first wall, click when the cursor cue endpoint is shown. Turn on the roof layer in the navigation palette for a moment and render in OpenGL. Now use the flyover tool so that you're looking at the newly drawn wall from the outside you'll see that this wall does not align properly with this roof. Creating a sloped roof to match your wall can be done fairly simply. Select the wall and go to AEC Fit Walls to Objects. In the dialog box, click the first option, Constrain Tops of Walls to 3D Geometry, and set the Fit to Objects on the drop-down menu to Roof. Also input 1 inch in the Wall Top Embedding Depth field. Just as the name suggests, we want the top of the wall to adjust to match the geometry we have on the roof layer, which in this case is the porch roof. You don't need to constrain the bottom of the wall, so click OK to fit the wall to the porch roof. You should see the top of the wall is now sloped according to the slope of your porch roof. Later, we'll add windows to this wall. You can now set the roof design layer back to invisible and return to a top plan view. Now you can move on to creating the actual pads for the entrance steps. Before you begin, make sure to change your active design layer to slab 1 in the view bar. Select the line tool from the basic tool palette. Using scan 1 as a reference, trace the leftmost line of the steps to create a vertical line between these two walls. Remember that you can hold the shift button to ensure that you're drawing an accurate horizontal line. Next, select the polygon tool from the basic tool palette and ensure that the second mode, 
inner boundary mode is enabled. Now click to the right of the line you just drew between the walls, and a polygon should be created to fill that area. Next, choose the Offset tool from the Basic Tool Palette, and enable the Offset by Distance and Duplicate and Offset modes in the toolbar. Additionally, set the Distance field in the toolbar to 6 inches, then click anywhere inside the polygon you just created, which should still be highlighted. After the Offset Polygon is created, activate the Selection tool and drag the Offset Polygon by its rightmost vertex and snap it to the rightmost vertex point of the larger polygon. After moving the smaller polygon, again choose the Offset tool from the Basic Tool Palette and click anywhere inside of the smaller polygon to create an even smaller offset. Just as you did before, switch to the Selection tool, then drag the newest offset by its rightmost corner to the rightmost corner of the larger polygon. Set Design Layer Scan 1 to Invisible from the Navigation Palette. There are your concrete steps. You just need to convert them into floor objects, which we'll do now. With the Selection tool, select the largest polygon and go to AEC Floor. In the Create Floor dialog box, set the bottom Z field to negative 18 inches, since it's the lowest step, and the thickness field to 6 inches. Click OK to create the floor object. Then hold the B key on your keyboard and select the middle polygon. Holding the B key enables X-Ray Select, which makes all 2D objects with a fill semi-transparent so that you can easily select any objects behind them. Go back to AEC Floor. This time, set the bottom Z field to negative 12 inches. The thickness field should still be 6 inches. Again, click OK to create the floor. Repeat these steps for the smallest polygon, but set the bottom Z field to negative 6 inches. The concrete pads for the entrance are complete. Let's create the concrete pad and steps by the porch entrance next. Zoom to the bottom right portion of the building. With the line tool, click on the leftmost point of the larger triangular walls to set the first point of the line. Also, click the bottommost point of the smaller triangle to draw the line. Next, with the line tool still active, click the topmost point of the larger triangle. Then hold the shift key and move upward until you snap to the circular wall above. When the cursor cue Object Vertical appears, click to finish the line. Now draw one more line. To start, click the leftmost point of the larger triangle. Hold the Shift key and move the cursor upward until you reach the circular wall again. When the cursor cue Vertical Object appears, click again to draw the line. These lines will help define the boundaries for the two pads at this entrance. Next, select all three of these lines and change the Layer drop-down menu in the Object Info palette to Floor 1. Now, temporarily make Floor 1 the active layer. In the Basic Tool palette, switch to the Polygon tool and enable the mode Inner Boundary in the toolbar. Click once inside each area, as shown in this video. Two polygons should be created. Select these two polygons, then go to the Layer menu in the Object Info palette and change it to Slab 1. Now make Slab 1 the active design layer again in the Navigation palette. First, select the polygon below the circular wall and go to Model, Extrude. Set the Extrusion field to 1 foot 6 inches and click OK. Also, go to the Object Info palette and set the bottom Z field to negative 1 foot 6 inches. This pad is actually a ramp, so there should be a slight slant to its extrude. To create this slant, first switch to a front view in the view bar. Also in the view bar, set the Active Plane drop-down menu to Screen Plane. Then, using the Polygon tool in Polygon from Vertices mode, 
Draw a triangle by clicking the following points, in this order, on the extrude. Top right, bottom right, bottom left, and top left. Now extrude this triangle by pressing the Command E on Macintosh or Control E on Windows. When the Create Extrude dialog box appears, you can simply click OK without changing any of the parameters. Change the view in the view bar to left isometric. The slant shown in this extrude needs to be applied to the extrude with the curve. Select the Push-Pull tool from the 3D Modeling tool set and enable the first mode in the toolbar, Extrude Face mode. Now, move your cursor to this face of the extrude until it's highlighted. Click once on this face of the extrude to select it. Then move your cursor downward until the triangular extrude overlaps the other extrude. Once you've pulled your extrude far enough, click again to resize the object. Use the selection tool and select both extrudes. Then go to Model, Intersect Solids. This will create one object with the desired angle for the two extrudes. Now let's finish the concrete pad to the left in front of the porch entrance. Switch to a top plan view. Before you extrude the polygon, select the rectangle tool from the basic tool palette to draw the steps for this pad. Also, make sure the first mode is enabled in the toolbar. After activating the tool, click the bottom right corner of the polygon, then move your cursor to the left and snap the inside of the corner of the bottom-most wall to create the rectangle. With the rectangle still selected, press Command or Control D to duplicate the rectangle. Drag the duplicate rectangle by its bottom right corner and then snap it to the top right corner of the original rectangle. These will be steps in the concrete pad. Now, select the polygon and go to Model, Extrude. In the Create Extrude dialog box, set the extrusion field to 1 foot 6 inches. After you create the extrude, change the bottom Z field in the Object Info palette to negative 18 inches. Next, select the bottom rectangle and extrude it 18 inches. Then in the Object Info palette, set the bottom Z field to negative 12 inches. Choose the remaining rectangle and again extrude it to 18 inches, but this time, after you create the extrude, set the bottom Z field to negative 6 inches. Last, select all three extrudes and go to Model, Subtract Solids. In the Select Object dialog box, click the arrows until the largest extrude is highlighted in red, then click OK to create the pad for the porch entrance. It's time to move on to the concrete pad at the top side of the drawing. Zoom into the top portion of the drawing and select the Arc tool from the basic tool palette. Enable the second mode in the toolbar, Arc by 3 points mode. Now, click where the round wall and the angled wall on the left meet. For the next point, click anywhere along the top of the round wall. Then, hover your cursor over the bottom-most point of the triangular walls in the top right until a small red square appears to let you know you've acquired the smart point. After acquiring the smart point, move your cursor back downward until you reach the round wall. When the cursor cue Object Align H is displayed, click to set the third and final point for the arc. Since you've created the arc shape for this pad, the rest of it can be drawn with the Polygon tool. Select this tool from the basic tool palette and enable the first mode. The first vertex point should be the last point you set for the arc. For the remaining points, set the vertex points at the same location in the same order shown. Double click on the last vertex point to complete the polygon. Then, switch to the selection tool and hold the shift key while selecting the arc you previously drew. Now both objects should be highlighted. With both objects selected, go to Modify, Compose to create
create one polyline from the two objects. To convert this polyline into a floor object, go to AEC Floor. When the dialog box populates, set the bottom Z field to negative 4 inches and the thickness field to 4 inches. Your concrete pads are complete. Feel free to render in OpenGL and use the flyover tool to see your progress. Return to a top plan view when you're ready to move forward.